السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ويلكم تو ذا بروجكت مانجمنت فاندمنتالز كورس ماي نيم از هاني اسماعيل اند اي ام ثريل تو هاف يو اول هير توداي اولذو ذيس كورس از تايتلد بروجكت مانجمنت فاندمنتالز دونت ليت ذا وورد فاندمنتالز ميس ليد يو ذا انفورميشن وي ار جوينج تو كفر از نوت جاست بيزك ات از اسينشال فور اني انجينير وركينج ان ذا كونستراكشن فيلد ويذر يو ار ا بروفيشنال اور جاست ستارتينج ذا نوليدج يو ويل جين هير ويل بروفايد يو ويذ ذا تولز اند انسايتس نيديد ان يور كارير وي ويل بي يوزينج ذا بي ام اي بروجكت مانجمنت بادي اوف نوليدج اور بيم بوك از اور جايد While Bimbook provides a solid theoretical framework, I will make sure to link these theories to the real-world application, showing you how these concepts are implemented on the ground. This approach will help you bridge the gap between academic knowledge and practical application, ensuring that you can apply what you learn here directly to your project. Let us start by looking at one of the most impressive projects in the history, the Great Wall of China. This project was built long before we had formal project management like we do today. It was built using cement, rocks, and bricks. The Great Wall of China is over 21,000 km long and about 10 meters high. Building this wall took more than 2,000 years and many generations of workers. To build it today, it would cost around $90 billion. From the information of this project, can we wonder how it was built? One important thing to notice in the huge amount of resources they had Lots of workers and material. This is very different from how we manage projects today, where we often have limited time, money, and resources. Another point is that even without modern project management, they managed to coordinate and complete such a massive project over a very long time. As we continue, we will look at other big projects from the past and think about how they were completed without modern project management. This will help us to understand why project management is so important for the success of today's projects. Next, let's talk about another incredible ancient project, the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Like the Great Wall, this was also built without modern project management practices. The Great Pyramids originally had height of 147 meter. It took more than 20 years to build. It required more than 100,000 men. If we were to build it today, it would cost about $1.2 billion. Just like the Great Wall, the pyramids was built with massive resources. They had a large workforce and plenty of materials. In those times, there were no strict deadlines or budget like we have today. This project also makes us think, how did they manage to complete such a complex structure without the project management tools and techniques we use today? They don't have a schedule, budget, or even a clear project plan like we do. Let's move on to think about how these ancient projects were possible without the constraints we face today, and what is the means of the importance of project management in our modern projects. How did the ancient project like the Great Wall and the Great Pyramid get completed without formal project management. In ancient times, they had what we would call unlimited resources. So they have unlimited labors, no deadlines, they don't have any constraints. But now, today, in the project management, we have constraints. Today it is very different. We have to manage our resources carefully, stick to deadline, and work within a budget. These constraints make project management essential. It helps us to ensure that projects are completed on time, within budget, and within the right quality. Now let's look at what project management is and why it is so important for modern projects. Now that we have seen how ancient projects were done, let's talk about what project management is and why it is very important. Project management is a way of planning organizing, 
and managing resources to achieve a specific goal. It helps us make sure that a project is completed on time, within budget, and meet the desired quality. In today's world, we often have limited resources, limited time, money, and people. Project management helps us use these resources efficiently. It gives us a structure to follow so that we can manage all the different parts of the project successfully. Let's look at what exactly a project is and how it is different from other type of work like operations or ongoing tasks. A project is a temporary task, so it has a start and it has an end. Some sample of the project could be developing a design of a new car. This is a project. Building a tower. This is another project. Creating a mobile application. This is a project. Please don't be confused between projects and operations. Because as we agreed, the project, which is the subject of our course, the project management, we are talking about projects, it has a start, it has end. But operations, it is ongoing, like the production line of the cars. It should not be stopped. The maintenance works after construction. This is an operation. The customer service to mobile application, also this is an operation. So what makes the project good or bad? The good project, we have what so called the three constraints or triangles, the quality, time and cost. So what makes a project good to be completed as bare modern project management? It should be completed on time, on budget, within the needed quality. And this is the main difference between the modern projects and the ancient projects. The ancient projects, they don't have any specific deadline to complete the project. They are just working. Whenever it is finished, it is finished. Regarding the budget, they don't have a budget. Uh, just using resources from around and whatever it takes, they will do it. And the quality, there is no specific quality. They just need to build it up to the best quality they have. So there is no specific quality. Nowadays, we'll find that we have limited resources. So we need to focus on time, budget, and the quality. From here, the project management became very important. Talking about good projects, let's take a look what is a bad project. Bad project might be on time, on budget, but it has low quality. Also, if you make it very good quality on budget, but it is late, this is not a successful project. And the third option of a bad project that we have quality and it is finished on time, but it is over budget or cost overrun. Don't worry about all these expressions we are using now. We are going to explain all of them in details during the course. So what is project management? Project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques. We have here knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques. This is very important to understand. The components of the project management, knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques. Okay, we are using these four things to meet the project requirement. We are going to talk in detail about each one of them now, because if you understand the concept, you will be understanding how the project management works. So we have here knowledge, skills, tools, techniques. Applying all of this will get the project goals and requirements. Knowledge. The first important part of the project management is knowledge. Knowledge is what you need to understand the project and how to manage it. The perfect guide to start your knowledge is the project management body of knowledge. This was created by PMI. It is a collection of processes, best practices, tools, techniques, and guidelines that are accepted as a standard within the project management industry. And here, as I said in the beginning, that we are going to use these concepts and try to link it with the actual, what is going on the ground, so we will have the theoretical information and the practical experience. To be uh, giving you some information about the BIM book guide, the BIM book guide was published in 1996 and it is keeping updating. Now we are in the seventh edition, which was published in 2021 and it is keep improving. Maybe you are listening to this video and now we reach it to the 11th edition or 12th. Since this book is based on the best practice, it is always being developed. However, 
the concept of the project management is the same so if you understood the concept then you can and start enhancing your knowledge and get it updated as it go so reading on how to drive a car reading on how to make a time schedule this is the knowledge to read and how to drive a car let me make it very clear for you you can theoretically read how to drive a car or you can read theoretically how to make a time schedule going to the next section which is the skills the skills is the application of the knowledge you have to combine your knowledge with a professional skill set to drive your project to success the previous example we said you that you read how to drive a car but can you drive one you read how to create time schedule does it mean that you can create one skills are developed through practice just like you need to practice driving a car to get better you need to practice project management tasks like creating schedules and so on to improve remember skills are what turn your knowledge into real results without skills knowledge alone is not enough to make a project successful in this course we are going to learn the knowledge and you need to practice how to apply in real life situations so you can gain the skills required to success will help you doing this now we talked about skills let's talk about tools tools beside knowledge and the skills you need tools to help you apply your knowledge and the skills and transfer your ideas into actions if you know how to drive you still need a car to actually drive this is a tool if you know how to create time schedule you need a software or a tool like Primavera p6 to help you to make it now you know how to drive but you need a car to use it in order to practice your driving you learn how to create time schedule you need a tool like Primavera p6 in order to practice on it so get yourself a car get tools so now you are ready for techniques techniques and project management now that you have knowledge skills and tools the next important element is techniques techniques are the methods you are used to apply your knowledge and the skills in the most effective way just like driving a car you can find different driving styles someone is driving the car very fast one is very slow this is what we call style in normal life we call it here in project management techniques also in planning there are different techniques let me tell you some uh, let's say project managers be referred to finish the ceiling first then the MEP then start with the floor finishes some other prefer to finish the flooring and protect it then start the ceiling and let me tell you here why it is important to have some good techniques using the right technique can make a big difference in how smoothly a project runs and how successful it is it's about choosing the best way of doing things based on the situation and the resources available the example we mentioned here about ceilings and floorings if you are expecting that the MEP works will be delayed because of coordination because of some other things in the side it has no point to delay all the flooring until you finish you can just complete the flooring protect it then work in the ceiling this is how project management encourage you to use the techniques so techniques learning driving techniques or learning schedule techniques and best practices this is what we call in project management techniques now let's talk about good management versus bad management from these slides you can understand the differences between good and bad management good management is a proactive way bad management is a reactive way it is still a management but it is not the best practices so the main concept is being proactive and let's have some examples you have a peak in labor in a certain period as a project management professional you should plan to get more labors ahead if you are just working day by day you will delay the activity until the you found more resources or until the limited resources completed the task and let me tell you something i face this a lot as a planning engineer then a planning manager then a head of the planning department i find that people don't like to plan ahead few only they plan ahead but when it comes to the problems 
they just being reactive they completely cannot plan a couple of weeks ahead but the people who or the engineers who start planning from day one in the project planning here i don't mean as a planning engineer they are planning for their own works like site engineer is planning for his own work a construction manager is planning for his own work a general manager is planning for his own company then they find some time to enhance these plans another example of good versus bad project management you know that the reinforcement is still won't be available after six months this is a risk if you are using project management techniques then you contact your supplier to reserve the quantity you need in advance if you are not working in the project management best practices you will wait for the problem to happen then find a solution the structure of the project management will give you the way how to being a proactive not a reactive considering this let's talk about project management life cycle let's talk about different type of project management life cycles and see what is the difference between agile and waterfall or traditional the agile project management which is not our subject in this course is very reasonable for software development or the scope is not clear or what is required to start MVP MVP min means minimum valuable product we are not going to discuss in this course but I would like to give you some information about it mainly developing a mobile application or software customer feedback something like this you can use a guide however in the waterfall traditional there is a clear scope of work we follow the plan it is cost friendly so it is best fit for the construction projects let's talk a closer look at the agile project management life cycle agile is a flexible approach to project management it is designed to handle project where the scope isn't clear from the start or where requirements might change during the project the agile the project is broken down into small manageable pieces we call here sprint the team delivers these pieces quickly as a form of minimum valuable product MVP after each delivery the team gets feedback from the customers and make adjustments based on the feedback agile is all about flexibility and the customer cooperation it focus on delivering value quickly and adapting to change which make it is a popular choice for software development and other dynamic industries now that we have covered the agile let's move on to the waterfall project management life cycle and see how the difference is in the project management life cycles which call waterfall project management life cycle this is a traditional project management which is subject of our course in the waterfall life cycle the project is divided into phases and each phase should be completed or started in order to start the other phase so mainly we're starting with initiation then planning then executing then monitoring and controlling then closing so this is the five phases of the project management when we talk about the initiation planning executing monitoring and controlling then closing for initiation we are talking about visibility study design tender don't worry we are going to talk in details about each stage of this one in the planning we are doing the time planning cost planning scope planning in the executing we are doing the project monitoring and controlling we are monitoring the time cost and the scope in the closing we have testing and commissioning handing over lessons learned so let's talk about the initiation phase starting with the visibility study visibility study is where we check or determine if the project is practical and worth doing for example the government decided to build 100 schools so they start the visibility study for an area to check if it is visible to build a school here or not how many children would join the school if it is built what their ages so the school in this area should be big or small or whatever another visibility study should be made for roads for example we need to build a road or construct a road 
should we make it very big road because there is a heavy traffic on it or it should be a small road because there is light traffic this is type of things need to be done also if you are going as a private sector you are going to build community you should do the visibility study to check okay who is going to pay or to buy these apartments are they looking for high level or medium level or low level it should be economic this is visibility study is the stage number one in any project once you find that the project is visible it has some profits then you go to the second stage the design and the design you should choose a consultant to develop for you the design some projects they are designed and built but they have some design requirement also should be done in this stage so design should be done at any way and develop the final design could be in the construction phase no problem but at least you should design something once you know that you are going to construct this project with this specification then you make the tender you call for bidders you make the contract out as i mentioned before this is only an introduction we're going to discuss all these in details and also stage two is the planning once we initiated the project it is time now to do the planning we have time planning where we sequencing activities we have cash flow resource histogram shop drawing procurement log we have cost planning where we should look at the cost control procedures cost breakdown scope planning we'll have quality control plan quality assurance plan stage three is the executing it is now to the time to execute things Oh, this is where the actual work of the project is carried out in the execution phase the project team work on delivering the project according to the plan we're going to discuss all of this in details later on but here we should make the shop drawing material log providing needed labor we see what how the course is performed and the scope a qqc plan quality audits when it comes to the monitoring and controlling this phase happens alongside the execution phase so it is no uh, it is not different phases we need to finish the execution in order to start the monitoring and controlling i will show you in a minute how it is work uh, in the planning executing monitoring and controlling this is what i mean with planning let me show you planning is happening then immediately we do the execution while we are doing the execution we are doing monitoring and controlling this is how it works and this also what so called progressive elaboration progressive elaboration means that as a project progress the detail of the project become more defined and clear it is a process of gradually refining and improving the project plan as more information became available in the early stage of a project you may not have all the details for example during the planning phase you might have a high level plan but as you move into the execution phase you gather more information and you can update and refine your plan this process continue throughout the monitoring and controlling phase where you adjust the plan as they needed based on the project progress and here i would like to uh, talk about something like some engineer think that once i have a plan i cannot change the plan but there is a very famous word saying if the plan didn't work it changed the plan not the goal definitely you can change the plan to match what is whatever going on but always keep the goal is to finish the project on time within budget and as per the quality so the final stage is the closing doing the testing and commissioning and handing over and uh, recording the lessons learned so in testing commissioning we are doing test to be sure that all system and components are working as expected then we verify the deliverables ensuring that all the project deliverable meets the required standards and are completed and the most important thing which could be ignored some project is the lessons learned lessons learned it means that you record what went right and what went wrong the closing phase is important for the project that to be sure that everything is completed to the client satisfaction it is also a time to reflect on project and capture important lessons for the next project so here we have a quick review we have here the life cycles as we agreed uh, we are going to discuss in details 
initiation, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, then closing. This is very important to have this modern project management because like ancient modern project has no limits they can do whatever they want they have unlimited resources but today we have limited resources we have time cost and quality so in order to achieve the project success we need to do the plan execute and monitor we keep doing this according to the project situation we keep enhancing our plans always so let's take a very quick question think with me according to what we discussed now okay in which project life cycle phase does the client call for bidders and choose the best bidder is it tender initiation or contract contracting phase definitely it is initiation phase taking reinforcement concrete cubes to test in the lab is a form of what inspection request quality audit quality control it is quality control how did ancient egyptian build the pyramids without knowing the project management unlimited resources no deadlines once we are in the execution phase we cannot modify the time schedule true or false definitely it is false now i don't want you to worry about not having the proper answers here because we just started so during the course i'm sure that you will have the required knowledge and the required tools and techniques to understand how to answer such a question i hope you enjoyed this lesson Thank you very much. See you in the next one.